All right, so in this lesson, we are going to talk about standard form of linear functions. And the first thing we're going to do, just like we did, we've done with our other is we're going to start by looking at a table and writing our explicit form. So if I'm looking at the change going in our table, finding that common difference or the slope, from 2 to 0, I'm subtracting 2. And then from 1 to 2, I'm adding 1. So that makes our slope or our common difference negative 2 over 1 which is the same as just saying negative 2. So you could choose to write the explicit form. You could also choose to write um, point slope form if you'd prefer. I'm going to do explicit form just for some extra practice with our um, arithmetic sequence writing that we did in the past. So I'm going to use this very first point here. So I'm going to say y equals 2, oop, not plus, it's going to be minus 2, because that's my difference, times x minus 1. So this is my first output. This is my common difference. And this is my first input, just as a reminder. So what we're going to do is actually take that formula we just had. Oop, and it was minus. Did it again. And we're going to work to make this look like standard form. In standard form, you are going to have x and y together on the same side of the equation. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of parentheses. So I'm going to distribute that here. That's going to give me y equals 2 minus 2x two minus 2. I can combine like terms. So in this case, it's going to say y equals negative 2x, which is okay. I'm going to add 2x to the other side so that x and y are together. So my standard form in this case is 2x plus y is equal to 0. And you'll notice x and y are both on the same side. There's a constant on the other side of the equation. And I've already given you the standard form general equation here. And there are a couple of important requirements here. My a value here, my coefficient in front of x, cannot be 0. It has to be bigger than 1. It cannot be a fraction. So a and b cannot be 0, and they cannot be, they have to be, Oh gracious, I can't spell today. They must be an integer. So that means no fractions, no decimals. All right, now let's take this into action and actually figure out what's going on. So you'll notice I already put two points here on my graph. And I'm going to use this to find the slope. So let's see. That is 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 2 over 5. So I rose 2 and I ran 5. So our slope is positive 2 fifths. Another thing I notice is I have my y-intercept. So I'm going to write slope-intercept form in this case because I have the slope and I have the y-intercept. So I'm going to make my life a little easier. 
So that would be y equals 2 fifths x minus 1. So I have a fraction. I'm not allowed to have a fraction as a coefficient in front of x. So what I can do is I'm going to multiply by 5. But remember, I have to multiply everybody by 5, which means I also have to multiply my constant by 5. So this is going to give me 5y equals 2x minus 5. Now x and y have to be together. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I have negative 2x plus 5y equals negative 5. Now if this is a multiple choice question, 99.9% 99 .9 of the time, they are going to give you x first and x positive. I highly, highly, highly doubt that they're ever going to give you a, a question where x is negative because that's not standard form. So, Everybody has to flip, sign-wise. So my standard form would be 2x minus 5y equals positive 5. Now all of my values are integers. My greatest common factor between a, b, and c is 1. And the value in front of x, my x coefficient, is positive. All right, so we've seen this one a couple times now, this problem, we're going to write this in point slope form and then redo it into standard form. So I have y minus 7 is negative 2 thirds times x plus 3, because remember it's minus negative 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this. So I have y minus 7 is negative 2 thirds x. And remember from our last video, when I do negative 2 thirds times 3, that would be negative 6 thirds, which simplifies to negative 2. So personally, what I'm going to do before I start to deal with my fraction, is I'm going to combine as many like terms as I can. That way I have less multiplication that I need to worry about. So now I'm going to multiply everybody by 3 to get rid of that denominator, including the constant. You have to remember to multiply the constant as well. So this is going to give me, I'm going to come up here, 3y equals negative 2x plus 15. And I'm going to add 2x to the other side. I'm going to have 2x plus 3y equals 15. And that's the end. Woohoo! All right. Oh, there it is. Same thing, except now I've been given two points. So before I can go anywhere, i got to figure out the slope. I'm going to make myself a table. So from 1 to negative 3, I have to go down 4. And from five to or from three to negative five, I have to go down eight. Now, if you had these two points the other way around in your table, that's fine. You would just see plus eight and plus four, which is still going to get us the same slope. Because negative eight divided by negative four still gives me positive two. I'm going to use this first point in my point slope form. And now we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. I'm going to distribute. 
I'm going to get constants together on the same side of the equal sign. I'm going to move x to the other side. But x is negative. That's no good. So everybody's sign has to flip, which is going to give me 2x minus y equals negative 1. All right, last one we're going to do in this video. An orange costs $3. An apple costs $2. I want to spend exactly $45. And our goal is to write an equation in standard form. X is going to be number of oranges. Y is going to be number of apples. Now, if I'm going to the store and I know that one orange costs $3, Every time I buy another orange, the price is going to go up $3. So if I wanted to figure out the total cost for oranges, I would do the price per orange multiplied by the number of oranges I'm going to buy. So $3 per orange, X oranges total, this gives me how much money I'm spending on oranges. I'm going to do the same thing for apples. And eventually you'll get to the point where you probably don't need to do this, but because we're still new at this, I'm going to show you all of the possible ways that you could be more successful. So an apple is $2. I don't know how many I'm buying, so we're going to call it Y. So $2 times however many apples I buy is my total for apples. Now I'm going to put all of the apples and oranges up on the conveyor belt at the supermarket and they're going to ring it all up together. So that tells me however much I'm going to pay for oranges plus however much I'm going to pay for apples and I want that to be exactly $45. And that is my equation in standard form for this word problem.